Fam, should we go on to the next one? Yeah. Because so. I know this one's going to get you fired up. <laughs> Fam's going to get fired up, ladies. Right now, Fam's in her calm spot. She's chill. But a little bit, something bad that works better than coffee is, check this out. Kamala Harris for president, Fam. How do you feel about that? No cops for president 2020. Ooh. Is Kamala Harris really a cop? Yes, actually, she is. It's not even a joke anymore. Let's let's first of all, let's just watch her ad to start. Yeah, it's just for starters. <laughs> Truth, justice, decency, equality, freedom, democracy. These aren't just words. They're the values we as Americans cherish, and they're all on the line now. The future of our country depends on you and millions of others lifting our voices to fight for our American values. That's why I'm running for President of the United States. I'm running to lift those voices, to bring our voices together. So please join me in Oakland on Sunday, January 27th, and go to KamalaHarris.org to join our campaign. Let's do this together. Let's claim our future for ourselves, for our children, and for our country. I'll see you in Oakland. Excuse me, me, fam. For the people. What? For the people. Did anyone ever say that before Bernie Sanders? I'm just going to throw that out there. What neoliberal bullshit was that? It's nothing but platitudes. Let's pretend we are... Um, marketing specialist, and we're criticizing this ad. Okay, so first I'm of sorry. All, now that we got so that out. So first of all, sorry. Um, I know it's the beginning of her ad. I'm not even gonna, you know, go there. But it's um, Jesus. the words she uses, as you uh, all can see if you go back and listen to it over and over again. I don't know if you want to. Are all very generalized, very platitudey, very like salad with nothing in it, just leaves. Just dry, nasty leaves. It's just very much like let's come together, let's let's work together yeah. for for our family, for our children. There's no <laughs> no specifics. Nothing. There's no stances on anything. Nothing. Um, no policy. There is no policy None. whatsoever. None. There is like a little upbeat music in the back to show like how hip and cool she is, and you know, and like yeah, like I'm here. I'm a woman. And this film for me. And she needs an acting cheer, coach. Cheer, cheer, cheer. Every single thing. And let's us. Be be together in Oakland. I'll see you there. Our values unite us. She needs an acting coach as well yeah, because well, she got a the long thing. way to go. Need, you don't need an acting coach when you're just literally saying the truth and and speaking about issues that are affecting the American people. The reason Alexandria Ocasio Cortez's ad was so moving was because it told her story and how she. It was a normal working class person who simply thought that nobody was doing the job they should be doing. And that's what she's running. And the issues in here are the issues that are affecting me and my community. And that's like it's really it's really not something cryptic that you all have to figure it out. It's very easy to figure it out. It's not cryptic. There's not some hidden message in there. Some form of policy. So let's differentiate between her ad and then uh, how what her actual policy is, which is probably the reason why she's not talking about yes. it. So um, thank you to Cop Mala Harris on Twitter, by the way. I share this on my Facebook and it has like thousands of shares because this is information that all of you should have at, at your fingertips, just so you know. Um, number so one. number one, as California Attorney General, Kamala Harris defended the state's death penalty laws. So... That is absolutely verifiable. Um, if you go into this link right here at kcra.com, it talks about how she um, w- worked against um, having any kind of uh, retribution for death penalty. Like she is completely for the death penalty in, in a particular case. She specifically uh, dis- issued uh, a complaint against the Ninth Circuit Court against this. So that is just one issue that Mm -hmm. she is just god awful on yep number two i'm gonna go with here can i get a little bell i think we need like a little something come on go with number two in 2015 kamala harris oh did it go oh in 2015 (laughs) kamala harris sought to block gender gender excuse me reassignment surgery for a transgender prison inmate fam what is that all about So when this uh, lady, Michelle Lales Noteworthy, was convicted of second-degree murder in 1987, 
she uh, she was serving in prison f- with men, and then she got gender reassignment surgery, and she specifically, um, Kamala Harris specifically challenged the order um, in the court as well. And she said that the drug therapy and prison counseling made surgery medically unnecessary. So she was basically um, bringing together the law with someone's choice for gender reassignment not very progressive if you ask me yeah not at um, all very very anti um the t part of lgbt if we're gonna go there well, you know i think too it was also a form of her signaling to like you know moderate to right kind of people who think that oh that she committed murder or he committed murder that she shouldn't be allowed to have the sex change or whatever mm-hmm. she just wants to do that to get into a female whatever the case may be it just seems like a form of of signaling what about number three fam um, number three, so Kamala Harris was a firm proponent of civil asset forfeiture, uh, which means that she was sponsoring a bill that allowed true uh, prosecutors to seize assets before ch- uh, charges charges were even filed. And this is a big one in regards to Kamala Harris because, um, you That's- know, she's seen as the protector of civil rights, the s- civil rights people, uh, people who are activists, people of color, women, especially black and brown people and um, this is entirely false. Yeah, I mean, this is a bad one, too, right here. This is the, another one. When you go into uh, New York to talk to top Wall Street execs, uh, and then you're, you're, you're proposing and you're sponsoring laws like this, I mean, mm-hmm. that allows you to seize assets before charges were even filed. I mean, that's just ridiculous stuff, and it favors the rich once again. Give me a little bell over here. I got to go number four over here. Ready? All right. In 2010, a judge declared that a San Francisco district attorney Kamala Harris had violated defendants' rights by hiding damaging information about a police drug lab technician. Fam. And when she, what is when this you, all about? When you have a pow- the power like that, um, you're in a position like her as a, an attorney general um, and pro- a prosecutor, which she's been both, and she started as a, a senator, as mm-hmm. you know. Um, and you are automatically doing shady things like hiding documents and, 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 you know, putting the wrong information. I know Biden was also accused of something similar. It just shows that you're not going to have the same kind of integrity in anything you do. And uh, to, to me, that just shows that's a no-go when it comes to the presidency. Jeez. Give us a bell for number five over here. Fam, you want to read it? Yes. So Kamala Harris refused to charge One West and its CEO, Steve Steven Mnuchin, as many guy. of you know, Trump's uh, Treasury Secretary, for criminal conduct that affected thousands of homeowners. In 2016, Mnuchin donated $2,000 to Harris's Senate campaign. So here's another, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your yeah. back. And uh, Steven Mnuchin is one of the most hated people yeah. um, because of all that, all of the things that he did that personally and directly um, affected millions of Americans. Yes, about with their houses and the mortgages, it's pretty much throwing them out, robbing them. One West committed like some seriousness, and guess what? Mnuchin only d- d- uh, donated to one Democratic uh, campaign. Guess who's fam? That's KD. Kamala the Kamala Cop Harris. Harris. Give us the bell. We're going out for number six. As a district attorney and attorney general, Harris pushed for a new statewide law that let prosecutors charge parents with misdemeanors if their children are truant affecting low income communities fam is that the thing where they don't go to school they play hooky and the parents can be charged um i don't know if it's just that but it's just in general that if if the if the if their children have misdemeanors then the, if they do something wrong yeah. then the parents are at fault and especially if they're obviously if they're minors yeah so that's ridiculous that's I mean, ridiculous like i mean i understand that you as a parent are responsible for your child but to try to um, get these parents involved in a kind of criminal sort of, you know, a, a, like a criminal case or whether, you you know, whether your kid does something or not is a little ridiculous. Um, and it also, again, adds more to our profit, uh, for-profit uh, prison system, which apparently she just is so against. Yeah. Let's get the bell. Let's go to number seven here because Ka- Kamala's got a lot of stuff to still, you know. Kamala Harris, give me the bell. So Kamala Harris persisted efforts to make her office investigate police killings. No. And this is the one no, Californians fam. were very <laughs> were very are very very aware of because yes. um she hasn't done she didn't do much uh mm. during her time and 
it's it's one of those things where even people of color were telling her, hey, you, you need to actually do something. You need to actually prosecute um, these uh, these police officers. And the reason why people say Kamala Harris is a cop is because she not only refuses to actually hold him accountable, but also she gets money yeah. from s several uh, police unions and several uh, a lot. A lo like yeah. a lot of people who work in law enforcement. And she has pictures with them and hangs out with them. Yeah, um, she just she's honestly, you know, a person that that is all about yeah. th that side of of the aisle you know yeah. does not no, prosecute enough people she doesn't have any 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 problem with taking money from the people from the pri private prison industrial complex she never has she will continue to do it she's she is a cop and you know what the most disgusting thing about this is that yeah. she refused to prosecute a, a police officer who shot an unarmed black man and you know there's a lot of that going on still to this day jackie lacy's another one over here yes. but kamala harris instead decided to prosecute the people who were protesting mm -hmm. the shooting of an arm, unarmed and murder of an unarmed, unarmed black yeah. man she did that instead and that to me is what's disgusting more than anything give me the bell over there we're going number eight this was a big one kamala harris repeatedly opposed meaningful reform of the state's uniquely harsh three strikes policy. Fan, we're still reliving this stuff. Mm -hmm. Disproportionately affecting black men. Her Republican opponent was more liberal on this issue. Fam. I mean, this just is just self explanatory, and three for time's strikes. sake, we can't go fully into it. But um this is this is such a conservative mindset like for, yeah. for, some, for someone that's going around talking about i'm from oakland i'm liberal yeah. blah, 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 our blah. values like, no this is this is literally what um puts black people specifically but in general people of color in jail because yeah. a lot of these people grow up in an environment that's conducive to being involved in any sort of crime whether they're forced to go into uh, gang initiation whether they're you know, they're forced to sell drugs because they don't have money, whether their parents did that in any way, shape or form. And to say that, you know, the the, the streets, three strikes rule, it's yeah. just disgusting. It's and, very and it's disproportionate. Literally, too. to me, this is that is why she's one of the most uh, the t worst candidates that anybody could vote for. And I see a lot of progressives being like, well, Kamal is not that bad. Yeah, I'm I like, know, right? Oh, really? That's why they're not this progressive. This is literally the, wor yeah. the worst candidate for the people of color right now. And all we're focusing on, which is what we're going to talk about later, is the color of her skin. Yeah. So, Well, let me ask you a quick question, fam, because I think it's a great time why we're in this heated discussion and stuff like that. Because I, I thought about it last night when I was going to bed. If they cheat, a progressive again, a kneecap mm -hmm. a progressive, and come out with Kamala Harris. It's Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. I might not even vote. Yeah. I might not even vote. I'll write in Bernie Sanders. I'll write in Tulsi Gabbard if she was the one who's cheated. But if it comes to Kamala Harris running against Donald Trump, I will not vote for Kamala Harris. I don't, I'm not going to vote for Trump, I'll tell you that much, but I will not vote for Kamala Harris. And I'm saying it right now. This woman does not deserve to be president. Give us the bell and get to number nine, fam. We're getting fired up over here. Come out swinging. By the way, just to throw in, in there, uh, Kamala Harris, top campaign contributor before has been Time Warner. Yep. And um, Time Warner's already donating to her again. Yep. And Time Warner owns CNN, CNN, just so you all know. Oh, didn't she get a town hall coming up with oh, CNN? Yeah. I mean, when Bernie announced he got a town hall with CNN right away. No, not until they after don't even, he got cheated. They don't even talk about a Tulsi either. Yeah. Um, so number nine, Kamala Harris repeatedly worked to keep innocent, an innocent man in jail. This is that case that um, everybody was up in arms yep. about, who had already served more than a decade for a crime he didn't commit. So oh. she was actively working against this man after he was in prison for 13 years for something he didn't do. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> and Kamala the cop, man. I'm sorry. This woman is not going to. I hope to God she doesn't become the president. Give me the bell. I got to go to number 10 over here. Because this is a good one, fam. Because this reminds me of Ray McGovern talking about the acts of the CIA and the FBI doing mm. shady shit like that. And that's what I'm saying. They're all on the same level now. Kamala's on that level. Kamala Harris defended a prosecuting attorney who slipped a falsified confession into an interrogation transcript. That is some of the most shadiest shit I've ever seen in my life. Well, she's a cop. They do that all the time. Oh, my in Lord. New York, they specifically yeah. do, it, do it all the time. Um, forced, 
confessions, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, Kamala Harris went after Number Backpage. 11. Okay. Number 11. Number 11. <laughs> An online classified website used by sex workers during a- an election year, putting them back in harm's way, looking for work on the streets. Okay, so this one is kind of controversial. Yes, it is. Because back Backpage is one of the uh, main places where ch- children, specifically mainly women, have been uh, put, sold, and sex trafficked through that website where a lot of men knew where to go to actually find them. And so Backpage is actually damaging anyway yeah so if there is the least horrible thing she could have done this is it because yes when you when you prosecute um sex workers as criminals you are also increasing our prisons with women who are actually victims okay of of a system and of a system that that um exploits them for their bodies and also of the economics in uh you know the infrastructure of a family that's fallen apart to where they they feel like they have to do that in order to survive yeah. so it yes it's it's bad when you go and uh, prosecute sex workers however backpage as a um as as a whole was terrible because there was a lot of children yeah. that were being trafficked there and there was a special documentary uh, i saw a while ago that spoke about how just it, the, the amount of money that these people have, uh, the back page uh, people, the PR consultants that they have has kept them going. And and you can still find children there through little clue words that they write, like white dove or something, which means like an underage minor. It's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a no win, no win situation. The only one who yeah. wins on this is the libertarians who say that, uh, you know, uh, prostitution should be legal because you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't because there were a lot of women who who were sex workers that were of legal age not children not traffic just doing it on their own because it's the only way they could survive and they were using Backpage. so by cutting off Backpage, you still threw them on the streets and and it made it harder for them to look harder for them to screen people uh that sort of thing it's a very complicated thing uh but you know what i don't think the whole sex trafficking for kids was really the mentality that Kamala Harris had when she right. shut it down. I believe it was an ideological, ideological belief that prostitution should be illegal, and that's why she was cutting. You know, that's a controversial yeah. one either way. But yeah. once again, but let's, yeah, but yeah. It, it, you know what? Pr- prostitution being illegal increases the amount of women in prisons. It increases the amount of people we have in prisons. Yeah, and and that's not that's not how it should be. Give me so. the bell, my man. I got to read number twelve here because this is a big one over here. Kamala Harris's office opposed a Supreme Court ruling fighting not to release nonviolent California inmates. Now, I got to tell you something, fam. I watched this thing the other day. They had the biggest mass bailout ever. They bailed out Mm -hmm. like 200 inmates in Rikers Island and stuff. And there was a guy opposed who was talking and saying, well, these people don't feel safe. They said 75% of these people are not going to even be charged. 75% of these people, it's not going to even, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be, they're not going to go to prison. You know what I'm saying? But the one guy was trying to say who worked for the prison saying, well, these people feel safe. That's disgusting. Okay. We shouldn't have to lock up 75% of the people are going to not even be charged. Okay. But still have to pay this money. Still have to go through our system. And everybody's making money. And you're talking about nine nonviolent crimes in California. And she wants to keep them in jail. And she wants to keep them in jail. Disgusting. Because we would lose... An entire important vital labor pool. Oh yeah, that's literally Who's what she fight said. A fire? That's exactly for what for how much? Ten cents a day, twelve cents an hour, whatever the hell it is. No, it's not. It's not even. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, it's disgusting. Totally and ridiculous. That's why? Let's get the bell and get to number thirteen, fam. Kamala Harris refused to release nonviolent inmates, saying she has a client referring to Governor Jerry Brown. The California Attorney General is an independent election is an independent election position, so she was not serving at the governor's pleasure. So she again, this is more about the refusal to um, release any uh, give the inmates the same amount of of leeway that she gives people like Jerry Brown or people like Steve Mnuchin. Yeah, this is the one. Give me the bell because I'm going to number fourteen because this is the one where I was done, fam. You know me, fam. I'm done. Kamala Harris <laughs> refused to back marijuana legislation. You're done. Legalization. You're done. That's turkey talk. I got a turkey over there. I want to go. Kamala Harris. 
<laughs> while continuing jailing black men for it, okay? You know, busting men of color for having a joint bullshit. Even at, even her AG, Republican, Attorney General, Republican opponent, backed the legislation. A Republican is backing the legislation. Legalization of marijuana. And Sorry. the Democrat is not. Sorry. I said legislation. Legalization. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, which is obviously important to many of us. Bella, uh, <laughs> we're going number 15. Very important to me, fam. My most important thing. Not only did Kamala refuse to investigate police shootings, like we've mentioned before, she also refused to install police body cams, which is something that um, California has been trying to um, but keen on. And finally, I believe we passed that, that the, we will be installing uh, body camera regulations on people, on police officers. So she's against that. Yeah. She's a cop, you guys. Fam, She's a cop. Kamala Harris <laughs> is a cop, no doubt about it. And let me tell you something. That was just the cop uh, discrepancies we had. We didn't even get into her money. No. We didn't even talk and about her. We would be here all, all day if we Please. went into every specific of every case. But <laughs> let me just tell you, go to Cop Mala Harris on Twitter, and there are yeah. links, or to my Facebook and Facebook. Uh, that post because there are links to every single thing that is stated there that you can read in your own leisure. There's a lot of information there, but it is important that people know that she is definitely not a civil rights no uh, activist, leader, any kind no of way. way, shape, or form for, for people of color. That is what she's running on, and that is what we have to kill from the very beginning. Yeah. All right, so I want to kind of transition to this, fam, because once again, we want to talk about the identity politics as pertaining to Kamala Harris, because it stuck its nose out really dirty, uh, you know, coming from, you know, somebody saying, talking about the money lines and saying, oh, the woman is bought and paid for. And then we get to this whole debate yeah. and argument about that being very insensitive, that it's referring back to mm -hmm. slave ownership and whatnot, fam. Let's talk about the, because this is something we need to continue to talk about, because I still say this is going to be the death of the left, and I can see it right now. Every time I watch my shows on RTs, when I watch the panels, they fear that the left is going to kill themselves through identity politics. Fam, you got anything to say about it? Okay, well, we'll take a quick, quick break, break, and then we'll be right back.